me see if I can. One night while upon life's raging sea, looked as if I would suffer defeat. Darkness of night closed off the light. My heart sank with fear. I knew my destruction was a matter of time. Jesus stepped in and said, this old boy's mine. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He made a way when there was no way that I could see. When I drifted far, Jesus was near. Rescue my soul and calm my fears. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far, would anyone care that I should be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. Jesus stepped in and said, this one is mine. I'm safe from all harm. So he walked through the storm. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He made a way when there was no way that I could see. When I drifted far, Jesus was near. Rescue my soul and calm my fears. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. We went to church every Sunday morning, Sunday nights and weekdays too. We learned about Jesus and how to make it through. Well, I'm going to see Jesus. He's the one who died for me. He treated beauty full of those ashes and he set my spirit free. We planted fields for crop by faith. God would help them to grow. Mercy lent in his hand when my dad began to sow the yonder tractor kept us working as we did our very best with two cylinders that made that noise but that old putt putt made us rest oh i'm going to see jesus he's the one who died for me traded beauty for those ashes and he set my spirit free when the last leaf was sold found the purest gold, we bought the groceries and we paid our fees. We went to church to give thanks for God who gave us strength to work another year in the field. Oh, I'm going to see Jesus, he's the one who died for me. He traded beauty for those ashes and he set my spirit free. family Bible on the table It's pages torn and hard to read But the family Bible on the table will ever be my key At the end of day when work was over And when the evening meal was done Dad would read to us from the Bible And we'd count our men 
donuts too I'll, I'll. I better not say that I did say something about refreshments the other night that there would be some fried donuts uh, and I was kidding but I was really serious that was a hint to the ladies and they didn't take the hint so we didn't have but anyway count
And in the meantime, we've got some technical difficulties going on with the sound system. If you know how to put these wires up under this pulpit, would someone come and plug them in the right pulpit? Okay, y'all come back on this side. Mother in a church hat clap Man, that sugar gave her color purple Coming back clap, uh When that whole week beat you up and stress you But you hear that organ playing And it remind you of your blessings And on another note, she just hit another note Chills down my spine, got me crying Make me overload, you don't know about it though Old school church hymns Seekers get the humming out of drum I'm finna burst in Lordy, 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 Lordy. Can you hear me now? Church 
close, swear they don't care, you just get it now. Testify how we made martyrs out of these fathers and rose up all of his daughters to glorify him with thunder. It's amazing what you do when you plug them in the right way, isn't it? <laughs> Let's stand this morning and uh, sing a couple of songs. And being y'all already warmed up, I'm sweating. Uh, I'm so glad. i 
Y'all seen those kids up here a while ago? We're going to sing that song again. But Christy ain't going to play the piano. She's going to clap and keep us in tune. And we're going to sing that, and y'all going to clap and keep us in tune. Y'all ready? Now, the string boys is going to have at it. And, uh, and Randall is going to keep the beat. So let's do that and have just as much enthusiasm as these kids had up here. All right, you ready? Get me started there, sister. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Very good. I didn't have one of these in there. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come in your house and worship you today, Lord. Just be with all the sick, free ones in the hospitals and nursing homes. Give us where we fail, Lord. Be with this offering at this time, Lord. Help us take it and use it for the upbuilding of our kingdom. Be with the sin sick in the world, Lord. Just ask the, that you will be with our. Our world, our government, Lord, just ask that they will turn to you for guidance, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm used to all that. My dad was a Pentecostal preacher. Yeah, we got Pentecostal. He done a lot of jumping and shouting. And I was thinking that uh, David's mama used to do my mama's hair and put it up in that old big beehive. Yeah. And they kept the uh, bobby pin or hairpin people in business. Yeah. But after, after the service, you could pick up probably two or three hundred bobby pins up in the front where they'd shout it. And the beehive was down flat by the time they got through. So anyway, uh, I was thinking, well, I was thinking this morning that you know, there's a heaven, amen, there's a hell, and we can't, we can't stay here, we're going somewhere, and I try, I always try to defeat Randall over there, so I got a new one this morning, he said, I ain't never heard that one either, y'all probably have heard this one, <clears throat> Well, John tells of a city that he saw coming down Where no sorrow nor death will be known And someday I might go there Through God's marvelous grace We'll trust again in that heavenly home well, I can almost see the lights of that city. I see them gathered all around the great white throne. Through faith in my Savior and his wonderful love, I can almost see the lights of home. Well, sometimes 
when I'm burdened and my cross seems hard to bear and old Satan tries to dim sweet heaven's view well I just look up to Jesus he's standing close by and once again Heaven's light shines through Well, I can almost See the lights of that city I see them gather All around the great white throne Through faith in my Savior And His wonderful love I can almost See the lights of home Well, I can almost see the lights of home Come on, help me out My God can do I get it right My God can do anything Anything, anything my God can do anything. He made this earth in all its fullness and all that time shall bring. My God can do anything. Y'all got that now? One more time. I ain't even got the tune to it. So let's try one more. My God can do anything. Anything, anything, my God can do anything. He made this earth in all its fullness, and all that time shall bring. My God can do anything. Let's stand together. We got a couple more. We're going to see before, okay?
she's still singing. This morning, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 15. Pretty much all week uh, was something's been burdening me in in watching, you know, our vacation Bible school and the excitement of all the kids and all like that. And, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've had greater numbers in the past, but we hadn't had greater kids in the past. Uh, just greater numbers in the past. Uh, but my thoughts go to this, and the Lord gave me these uh, things. My wife's asked me so many times this week, well, what's wrong with you? What are you thinking about? And, you know, I, and it's, it's been my message. It, it's been how God wants to present this message. And this is a very familiar message, but it's come to me unlike I've never had before. And uh, that's, that's the way God does stuff. And uh, uh, without further ado with that, I... Uh, I was given some stuff this morning. It's, it's good to have uh, Brother C.W. with us this morning. Uh, Charlene and Jimmy brought him. And uh, what I have here is uh, Miss Blanche Riggins. This is Miss Blanche. I didn't say she was an old bag. But she sent this and said that she needed for them to bring her some blessings. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay it there, and if you receive one, if there goes one in that bag, it'll come from the Lord. And expect the blessing, and you shall receive one. Now, I don't know how it might fit in that bag, but we're going to send it back to her just like that, okay? But it's good to have you uh, with us this morning. But if you would, uh, look at verse 11 and stand with me. I'll just read one or two quick ones and let you get see. I know you've been standing up a lot. But uh, that's okay. Keeps the blood flowing and you awake. Verse 11, it says this about the uh, prodigal son. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, he says, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and he took his journey into a far country, And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty family in in that land, and he began to be in want. Father, this morning, as we look into your word, God, we want you to bless the reading of it. God, I want you to open our hearts and minds to hear from what you have for us today. God, I only know bits and pieces. The gaps will be strictly up to you to fill in because I have nothing on my own. And God, I pray, Lord, that we will have the mindset and the heart set to receive that you have for us. God be with us this morning. Bless all the ones that couldn't be here. and Thank you for the ones that hadn't been able that are here today. God, we thank you for that. Go with us now and have your will and way. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, we know the story. This is the story of the prodigal son. And uh, some things we're going to look at uh, uh, just to kind of go ahead and get your mind set. Um, 
where are we at today? Let's think of the Father here. Uh, you know, a lot of times we don't speak about the Father to the end of this story. But something happens early on in this parable. You know, the parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And I believe this morning there's a meaning here that we could apply to what's going on in this world that we have today. So we see a, a young son who's come to his father. Now, uh, Here's the thing I, I, I want to share with you. Uh, I believe we have a spiritual pandemic in the world today. Amen. We have a spiritual pandemic in the world. And I'm going, uh, I may act like I'm blaming on certain things in this world, but ultimately I'm blaming the reason for the things that they are on the devil himself. Because he is the author of confusion. He wants trouble in the home. He wants trouble in the church. He wants trouble in the government. He wants trouble in a nation that's free to worship God in spirit and truth. So when we look at this, there's a, a pandemic fixing to break out in this home. This man, this man that had two sons. Now it looks like one son there, he's, uh, uh, he's going to stay at home. But this other one come and uh, it's kind of a generation that we have today. Uh, they want everything given to them early on in life so that they can get what they think is coming to them. Well, I got news for you. You ain't going to get anything uh, coming to you except a place called hell if you do not accept Jesus Christ and the old way that it's supposed to be. So a pandemic has broke out in this house. This young man, uh, you know, and we never even, even glimpse at what's going on at the father's uh, heart at this moment. You know, I wonder how many days, you know, it took him several days. You hear it said it took him days. How, how that the father could figure out and uh, uh, how he could turn or lose half of his estate, which was coming to that son uh, anyway down the road. And how could he give it to him prematurely because he was not mature, because he had uh, not the right spirit within himself. And his dad knew that, you know, dad's no thing. Also, when we look at the dad this morning, I want us to look at the heavenly father and, and, and what he feels uh, during a spiritual pandemic. You know, we, we don't think about him. We think about ourselves, but you know, it matters the most about what he's feeling. You know, because we were made to worship and uh, uh, spiritually lift up the name of Jesus throughout our life. That's why we were created, to be the glory of God himself. And now we see this young man has asked something of his daddy uh, that's going to really affect him. And it's going to actually cut the amount of people going to his table every night by 50%. Uh, the people other than his dad, it was going to cut him 50%. And, I, and I, I look at that. So what happened in this world that we have? Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the nation wanted a king that we, you know, we got now in, in, in authority. And I'm just not politicking whatsoever. I'm just calling it like it is. And they wanted a new world. They want to be freer than free, let me tell you. The only way to be free is to be born again. There's no, uh, everything ain't free. Uh, you know, uh, uh, just uh, my dad called me, you know, that's amazing. My dad says, son, have you heard anything about somebody, the government, just the state of Georgia, depositing you money in your account uh, because of the gas height, uh, height and all like that? Have you got in? I said, yeah, dad, I saw that coming in. I didn't ask for it. It just shows up, you know. Well, I ain't got mine. You know, but that's the way the world is today. I ain't got mine. The reason why you ain't got it is for reasons. I'm sure there's reasons. But we always, you know, if he's going to get it, I'm going to get it. Well, I can tell you, it ain't free. Salvation wasn't free. Salvation went free. But the, the spiritual pandemic is broke out in this house. And, 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 and I see the father here trying to figure out how are we going to make this place work with uh, uh, half of my stuff gone. Well, we don't know who he sold it to because he turned it into money. And, you know, I don't know how all that happened. I don't know if he bought it with his own money and bought his son out. or I, You know, the Bible is not clear on that. But what I do know, it cost him. And, uh, and, and he wouldn't have done that. But there's some things that the father goes, you know, I, th I think sometimes when we were raising our kids and, and you were raising your kids, uh, you, you wondered where they were, when, what they were doing when they wasn't around you, right? You know, as long, you know, me and my wife would sit up till they come, even though we may be fell asleep in the chair, when that back door opened, we knew they was at the house. 
You know, and what a good feeling. And immediately when we woke up in that chair, the first thing we looked at was the clock to see if they made it their own time, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the way we was because we was concerned. We didn't have no peace in our heart until they were at home. You know, and this father is, is going to go through some mental struggles knowing what's going to happen. This little boy don't know what the world's like out there. You know, it, you know, uh, uh, Brantley County is not like California. It's not like New York. It's not like Chicago. It's not like Miami. It's not like Atlanta. It's not like places that we hear about uh, and I don't care to go see about. You know, I don't want to go there because there ain't the kind of people there that I want to be around. I want to be around you guys. I trust you guys and you trust me and, and, and all like that because out there is a spiritual pandemic. The devil has offered a way to divide the church, to divide the, the belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and he used it called a thing called COVID. And this thing called COVID, we can blame it on China, we can blame it on anything. If anything in the years past when something would break out, whether it was smallpox or, or whether it was uh, 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 polio or whether it was any of those things back in the day, it drawed people to the cross. It drawed people to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to look for him and look for a way out. But what happened here, our government has stepped in and tried to make themselves God and going to fix everything and matters has gotten worse. The problem is in the house of the living God today, we got a spiritual pandemic that has caused a great number, not only here, but everywhere you talk has caused them to leave and showing them better and greater things outside of the church. Let me tell you, there's nothing no greater and better than to feed from the master's table, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and know that one day when you leave this world and you're going to tell it goodbye, that you're going to live with Jesus forever and ever. There's no better thing in the world. I don't know what the devil has done to people. You know, I'm not picking on nobody here. Let me tell you, I got a message on my heart. And I just got to preach what God gave me, okay? Don't get mad with the messenger. Take it up with the Lord if you man or woman enough to stand before him and do something. I'm just here to tell you, the pandemic, we call it COVID. I call it the devil and the demons from hell is what's brought him that way. It's brought it this way and we have fell for it. Not only that, it's amazing this time. It's affected the whole world. What is the outcome of this? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. You know, and i got to warn you. You know, I, 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 somebody keeps asking me. I hear this at least once or twice a week. Brother Jamie or Jamie or Mr. Giddens or whatever hat I'm wearing that day. I said, you ever seen things like this like it is before? I said, no. No. I said, I have it. But I know. I know what it's a sign of, don't you? I know that King Jesus is coming back. You know, I was talking to Brother Mike, and he's got the same thoughts I got. His folks were that. He's working his poor wife to death, by the way. Y'all pray for her. Anyway, uh, uh, putting up cannon stuff like that, he was, she was telling me everything that they did. Let me tell you, you folks know how to make it, okay? You better fall back on that way of making it. You better put a few peas in a little okra and some tomato in the freezer because one day this world may not offer you a way to the grocery store unless you're rich and wealthy or you got stamps that the government's going to allow you to make it on. On, you better do what you know how to do and we know how to make it first of all we know Jesus and that's the way to make it next of all he said if you'll be a provider for your family you're much more better off if not you're an infidel you must come together and we know how to do it you need to pitch your money back you not need to spend on all these advertisements you know what's going to break America is, is we got the internet and you can shop from the seat of your britches and you can overspend and over deliver and over get in your household till one day you don't have enough money to buy food. Why is there a, a, a shortage in a baby formula? Well, it's the act of the devil. He knows how to get America. He knows the, how to bring them down to their knees. You start messing with them youngins, you start having a problem. And we have watched it over and over. I'm not trying to blame it on one person. I'm trying to buy, divide, uh, blame it on one being, and it is the devil himself. And the world has fell for it. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Christians are walking around like we've got the plague and we don't. We got Jesus, you hear me. 
He is our Savior and Lord. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll never uh, leave his folks for uh, begging bread and not a way out. He's taught us how to do that. And even in the garden there we find it. Why did he call it a garden? It was a place to provide. It was a place to provide. Sin stepped in. He says, okay, on account of that, you won't just be picking for my garden anymore. You got to grow your own. You got to grow your own. Can you imagine? It's overwhelming that the number of people that don't know what a pea looks like other than when it comes out of the can. Or they don't know what an ear of corn looks like unless they find it on the uh, produce stand. Let me tell you, I go in and out of the Dollar General's get me a snack here and there. And I go in there. It's amazing at the empty shelves. But I'll tell you, I go to my house and flip up the freezer. And I look in there and I'm amazed how the God has blessed me. There's a few pork chops and peas and okra and the makers in there that I grew out there on his land and God give me sense enough how to do it. You know, I'll tell you what, I might die of something but it won't be a starvation. Man, I'll tell you, God give us this, wake up! Wake up. Can you see the big picture? It started with a pandemic. It started with the elected officials that we had, and we've turned our back on God. And listen, it's an attack on the church because what they're wanting to do as we speak right now is gather the Southern Baptists, the fathers west you can go to make decisions on what we do, my friend. I'm here to tell you there's a, a, an unevil a set of scales here in America today and in the, in the church. It's attack on the churches. Yeah, you can go. How many churches right now you think can afford to send 15 delegates over there? You know what, what that cost the church? Listen, it was an undermine. It was an undermine by the devil himself. We should not stand for that. Man, well, we have it in Georgia. It's centrally located. You know, I even went to Texas one time to witness thing. But now it's in California. Who in here wants to go to California? They say it's great. They, yeah, they, it's wonderful. You can find fresh used needles laying out in the yard. You can find places where people's pooped on the street. You can find numbers of uh, homeless people that will become your friend. And you'll find gas out there about $10 a gallon. Oh, I want to go there. I fuss down here at the store. Well, I'm telling you, are you starting to get a picture? Are you starting to realize where we at in the world today? We're not a defeated foe, my friend. We're blessed to know Jesus and the world that has walked away and the members that have walked away from their church is going to happen. Same thing what's happened to this prodigal son. Now, I'm not going to finish it all, but I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The Bible says, and we read the story, that he gathered up what his father had given his half. Let me tell you, you don't have a half. You, you don't have nothing. It all belongs to him. You hear me? He loaned it to you for a little while. Yeah, I know I don't own nothing. My house and all, I don't owe the bank uh, one red penny, but somehow or another, our government sends me a little thing recognizing me that I still pay them $200 a month to live where I live and it being paid for. So it's not paid for. But it never was theirs neither because it was God's. He made it. He created it. And it'll be his to redo one day. And he'll redo it and it'll be perfect because there won't be no sin in there and won't be no man in charge. It'll be him. This little boy, the Bible says that he gathered up his stuff. Here's the thing. There's been a ring in the ear. How can you find out what's happening all the way across the, the world right now at the snap of your fingers? And what you're finding right now at the snap of your fingers is called an iPhone or a Android. It's called the Internet. It's called Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Instant sin and all those kind of things. It's not all that. But you can be instant all over the world. You can find it out. And you know what? The pictures that you're seeing is not real. They want to advertise stuff on there. They, they, they want to advertise this thing about this. You take this pill once a day, you'll lose 80 pounds in six months. <laughs> you quit eating so much, you'll lose weight. Okay? It, you know, ain't no miracle pill. Have I ever been fooled on it? Yeah, I took some. I gained weight while I did it. I thought if I took a pill for it, I could eat what I wanted to, and it just melted away. Ah, that ain't the way it works. But I'm just telling you, there's a lot of fake stuff going on out there. This little boy, he had heard through the word of mouth, not by Instagram or by the Internet, he'd heard through word of mouth how good it was there in the city. And you know what the Bible called it? It says he went to a foreign country. 
the world's in a foreign place right now. The world's in a place right now. I can tell you it ain't never been before. And now all of a sudden they're starting to struggle. I've gotten here and I don't know how to get back. I, you know, I thought this would be it was. I thought I'd get an incentive check every month. And the government, where's the money going to get? Where's the government going to get that money? Well, they're printing it right now. But there's going to be a payday one day. And the U.S. is going to be broke as a bum on the street. And there's no way in the world we're going to dig out of it. You know what's going to happen when there? We're going to have a king that's going to come back. Yeah, he's, he's got uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. He's got more cattle on a thousand hills than they can imagine. And if he needs to bail us out, he'll just snatch us out. How about that? The Bible says, cause it, uh, you know, we're going to be snatched out of this world. I'm ready to be snatched. You say that to yourself. I'm ready to be snatched. Y'all ain't ready to be snatched. I'm ready to be snatched. I didn't want daddy to snatch on me, but I want the Lord Jesus to pick me. That means to pick me up and put my feet on higher ground. Take me to a place that I ain't never been before. Take me to a place that I've read about. Uh, There's one of the little children. I'll tell you, they so, you know, I taught some uh, vacation Bible school, and uh, it was Harley. And I'll tell you, Harley, she asked me, she says, why can't we see in heaven? I said, God don't want us to. I says, because I don't think we could handle it, baby. Well, what's it going to be like in heaven? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? You know what? That's what we need to be teaching our kids. They need to have those kind of questions in there and say, Mama, where's babies come from? Mama, can I, can I try some of that vaping, them little plastic cigars that people's got, and that smoke comes out? It smells so good. Mama, can I try some of that? What was these pills they talking about? And, you know, we got an open border down there, and, and they confiscating drug after drug after drug after drug, enough to kill 10 billion people in one, one uh, in capture. One. Listen, I'll tell you, you ain't going to get high and live down here on them kind of things, but you can get high in the Lord and be uh, spiritual high and not in a spiritual pandemic and live for Jesus and be just as happy as a bed bug. I can tell you, I'm happy as a, a flea on a dog that's fatter than me. I am. But a pandemic, this little boy's went out, and the Bible says that we find him over there. How long did it take? We've been in this for less than two years. Now, I'm not talking about the election. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just telling you, that thing started happening, and, and, and things started developing over two years now. That's a short time. Even in my lifetime, that's a short time. And now I look at it. Gas was $2 and something. Now it's $5 a gallon. Diesel was this, and now diesel's that. How in the world do you think you're going to get bread to the grocery store? How do you think you're going to get tater chips and drinks to the uh, store down there? It's going to take diesel fuel. Well, how are you going to pay them? You're going to have to pay because they're going to add the price to them tater chips and them drinks up there. You better learn how to make tater chips at the house with them new red iced potatoes that we've dug up out of the ground. That's what you better be learning to do. You know, and all them fancy flavors. Listen, Grandma always had a way to make things happen, didn't she? She could sprinkle a little this and a little that. And man, it just tastes like the best thing since chocolate candy. The world's in a mess. He went to this foreign country. And boy, he made friends. Man, it was just a ball. He had everything. But all of a sudden, he looked and he said, you know what? I'm out of money. I'm out of money. I don't have anything. I, you know, I, you know and, 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 and one of his dear friends says, I'll tell you what to do. Being you a little Jew boy, it don't matter. But if you need a job, I got a job for you. What you going to do? He said, what can I do? He said, you come out there to my farm. He says, and I'll let you slop the hogs. Yeah. He was a Jew boy. He ain't never even eat no pork in his life. He was raised in the church. He was raised to do the right thing. He was raised to do all that. And you know what? The Bible says that he went and done that that he knew he should never done. There's people doing stuff right now, and we're blaming it on two or three things. We blame, we, we blame it on our age. We're too old. We do this. We can't be active. We can't do this. That's baloney. You ain't too old until your heels is uh, uh, turned down and your toes is turned up. You can still do something, whether it's simply calling on the telephone or doing everything that you possibly can, and you can pray as long as you got a sound mind. You can do all those things. And now what we're saying is they're too young. Well, that bunch up there that was dancing and carrying on up there, my daddy said, they don't need to go on in them churches. Over there. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd much rather have it going up there. I couldn't understand the words of that song, but I got to listen because I heard it 4,002 times this week. And I can tell you, I heard some of the words in there. If I could write them down where you could understand them, there was a Jesus message inside of all that hip-hopping and jumping and a rapping and a carrying on. And it was a good message. We might not, but they 
they understand if I can't get them across one way, we'll get it across another way. And they got it in there. The world's going to use it. Let me tell you, you little sissy and little Bubba, he's going to hear something one day. And I'll tell you, I can't understand much of those songs either. But I've heard enough in there. There's a lot of sexual orientated things and drug things tied up in all those songs and the bebop and the, and the glass rattling music. Man, every morning about 6 o'clock, there's somebody coming to that mine going to work and I can hear them thumping before they get there. Now, if it was praise Jesus, hallelujah, or the king is coming, you know, I'd be out on the porch and I'd be cheering him on. I don't know what's going on. But this young man found himself over there, had a good time, and all of a sudden he's broke. And the man says, come to my house and I'll get you to do something. He, much less would he eat one, much less would he be found himself feeding the swine. So where's the picture? The spiritual fan- pandemic has struck. America is in the pig pen. America's doing things that they wouldn't, they can say constitution, they can say this, they can say that. Let me tell you, we was founded on Jesus Christ. We was founded on, on God and the freedom of religion in this world until we turn back and, and harness that and grab a hold of that and the flag that we, in which we stand and the God in whom we serve. If we don't get back to that, we're going to be in a mess. We're going to stay in the hog pen. You're going to start slopping hogs and you're going to start doing this. And I'll tell you what, if you're not careful, you'll start eating the, eating the feces of the hog because you're going to be starving to death for things in this life but I can tell you the world and the church part that has walked away in the spiritual pandemic they're going to find themselves in the, what the Bible says in want that means need tonight we'll talk about what the church should do when they bring, and then they come back if they come back if they don't King Jesus is coming anyway but there are some, when they hit rock bottom, when does most people come to their senses? They got to hit the bottom at a high rate of speed. It's like the fellow that fell off the ladder. I said, man, you didn't need to be on top of that house. What was you doing up there? He says, well, it wasn't the fall. It was a sudden stop that got me. Well, the sudden stop's going to get a lot of people. The government ain't going to bail you out. Jesus can bail you out. You know, it's amazing how he would uh, let this go on and not just rain down all kind of uh, destruction down here. But it's because of what he said in John 3, 16. For God so loved you and me that he wouldn't do nothing like that. But one day his father's going to say, Son, you gave your life. You bled on that cross and you come victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Now I'm telling you, I've had enough. You go back and get my church and you get those that want to love me. You get them that want to serve me. You get those who said no to all this kind of stuff and you bring them home. He's coming. Now you can stay in the spiritual pandemic if you want to, but I'm ready to break out of this mess. I'm ready to let people know that I'm happy in Jesus Christ. You say, well, you're preaching kind of mad. I am. I'm as mad as I ever been at the devil and how he's tricked the world and how he's tricked church folks and kept them away from the house of God and kept them from serving one another. Don't you think that man wanted his son to sit across from him at the table and sup with him and kiss him goodnight and say a prayer and read a few scriptures? Don't you think he missed him? He missed him. We got to wake up. Your kids don't have a say so in your roof. You say, Well, you being ugly now. I'm just trying to tell you are the kids raising you or are you raising them? The Bible says, Train them up in the way they should go. How do you do that? How do you break a mule? Well, you put a bridle on him. You put uh, reins on him. And you get you a long whip. And you got him down that row. If he gets a little fast, you crack him between the ears. If he's too slow, you crack him on the other end. If he goes left, you hit him on the right. You say, well, that's abusive, man. You can't do that nowadays. That's what's wrong. Listen. Just because... To hear a little little fella tell me to shut up. There's a twitch I got when that happens. They may belong to you, but my twitch don't know that. 
There's a twitch on the end of that twitch. If you're going to change the world, you got to change the babies. If we stay here long enough, they're going to be in charge. You better bring them to the house of God. The world better carry them to the house of God. What about the other way, the big super churches? Did y'all see what happened there in Joel Osteen? Anybody seen that? No? Well, I heard something. I saw it. I ain't a fan. I wasn't watching Joel Osteen. It just happened to come on the news, and I saw it. All this mess that's going on right now. Well, there was a mega church, and there was so many people there, and I'm sure they wouldn't. Like our guys out here watching who comes in, we enjoy, we, hey, we invite visitors, some folks in here, I don't even know right now. Hey, I'm glad you're here. You ain't got no gun or nothing, because if you do, we got some guys outside that does. Just to let you know. Just to let the world know. We love our people. It's up to us, don't you protect your folks at home? Well, this is God's home. And I'm the under-shepherd here, and we need to take care of them. I need you to feel comfortable to turn your back to that door and face God's man as he preaches the word of God, who it may be, whether it be me, Brother Mike, or whoever. Well, I can tell you what happened in this big church. These two young ladies almost got plumbed partly naked and shouted out profanity and said, this is my body, I'll do what I want to. Blankety-blank this and blankety-blank that about abortion. It seemed like it took forever. For them to get her out of there. Well, I tell you what. That breaks out at Hickox Baptist Church. I'm going to be ashamed of any grown man that don't cover that lady and put her behind out of this church. We don't roll like that. Y'all say, you bunch of rednecks. No, I'm, I'm red because of the blood of Jesus. And I, I'll tell you, if I can hang over and, and stand between right and wrong amongst my people, I'll do what I have to do. We have to come together. The pandemic ain't got me down. Hey, I've been inoculated. I've, I've been vaccinated by the Spirit of God. And I'll tell you, there's going to be some stuff come up about that vaccination, and I'm not knocking anybody that's had it. But I can tell you right now, what you need is a good shot of the Holy Ghost is what we need. You know what? And you come to church every Sunday, every, every time you can, and I so come, some can't, and I got, don't get, don't, don't ask me about all that. I'm just telling you, we could do better. We could do a lot better. The world could do a lot better. But I need a booster shot every now and then. That's why I come to the house of God. I get preached to why, even while I'm preaching. Do you understand that? Why do you think I'm so passionate about this message? Because I got talked to all week about to him, from him. It's a pandemic, all right. Don't be alarmed that the other countries are doing it too. Well, don't be alarmed that they're taking advantage of us. Let me tell you, the world took advantage of this young man. They robbed him of his daddy's stuff. He wasn't his. Let me tell you, don't let the world and sin rob you of our daddy's stuff either. He'll rob you of your joy. He'll rob you of your peace. He'll rob you of your happiness. He'll hit your finances. He'll hit, he'll hit your, 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 your food and your thing. He'll hit your family. He'll hit your youngest. He'll hit every kind of thing in the world he wants to because he thinks you're in a pandemic and you're weak. We're not weak. We still have our needs. We still have a prayer chain. Our line can't be cut to King Jesus. We can talk to him. Think about it. What did your daddy think when you were gone? And he could not see you. What do you think God thinks when his people are gone and they don't come and sup with him so he can sup with them? It's too much people don't care what other people are thinking. Too many kids don't care about, and there's this generation, don't really care. They, mo they know more than mom and dad. When they get out there, they fall flat in the face and want what happens. Start blaming mom and daddy. And mama said, well, we didn't have that problem as long as y'all was here. Huh. Well, 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 d d daddy always had a few dollars in his pocket if I got it. But yeah, he did. You know why? Because he saved back some stuff that he wanted. He didn't get because there might be a rainy day one day. There, there, they might be, a, a, you know. In the business I'm in, sometimes I see these old people don't, don't cut their wood and don't cut their wood because they've saved it for a rainy day and now they're, they're about to check out of here. You know, and you know what I tell them? Hey, you saved it long enough. Turn it into money right now. And then you enjoy, if you want to save it, save that and give it to your kids. But do the right thing. 
Don't give it to them while you're living because they'll, they'll spoil them. They might not love you as much anymore. Let's be honest. I want God to be happy. It goes back to that old song. Is my Lord truly satisfied with me? I want my life to be what he'd have it to be. We don't have to be sick in a sin-sick world. The Bible says that we're more than overcomers through Christ. There's nothing impossible with him. Come back. I'm not talking to these folks that's in here. I'm talking to them folks out there on that internet that's listening. Because some of them can't be here. And some of them could be. Listen, serving Christ, serving God is not at your convenience. Did you hear me? That's what Facebook's made it. That's what the pandemic drawed the churches to do it, and people got to liking it. There's other things. They may watch this baby on Monday night because through Saturday and Sunday, they're going to be somewhere else because they got used to it during the pandemic, and now the sickness has fell on them. I'll do it when I want to. I'll do it how I want to. The Bible says there's no man cometh unto the Father except by him. There's only one way, and that gate's called straight. Straight. It's his way or no way. Like my daddy used to say, it's my way or the highway. That's what this little boy happened right here. He got on the highway of bad luck. No, nah, he didn't have bad luck. He made bad decision. You don't have bad luck. You don't have good luck, my friend. You have good decisions and bad decisions. What will it be today? I don't know what's going on in your mind, but some of them, I'm sure you're kind of thinking what's going on. Well, that preacher's crazy. I am. I am crazy. I'm crazy about the Lord Jesus. I'm crazy about people not falling out of love with him. I'm wanting people to fall in love with him. Let me tell you, Vacation Bible School, I don't know what it cost, but it, well, it didn't cost us near enough. It didn't cost us near enough. You say, why do you say that? We probably spent this. We might have, but it wasn't near enough. Did you know we had one to get saved? Did you know that that child will never spend eternity in a place called hell? How much is that worth to you? Money can't buy. That's what my wife told her. Money couldn't buy, but my good luck sure could. Jesus said no. He says, while you were yet a sinner, while you was ugly and undone, I died for you anyway. And now, those that are born again, you are what you are by the grace of God. Not of yourself, not nothing you've done, but what he's done. I'm going to close. Tonight, we're going to find a reunion. We're going to find the antidote. And we're going to see a father who went from very sad to happy. And what the church should be like when the waywards come home, it starts with this and this. Father, today as we thank you for your spirit, Lord, that I feel in this very place. God, I, I'm not surprised because you can do all things, but God, how this thing developed, and God, it's always you. God, the message is out there. Let the Spirit clean out the wax of the deaf ears. Lord, let it just go through the ear and penetrate to the heart and let them realize where we're at. We've went too far. But it's not so far we can't come back. If we close this facility and the next one closes and the next one, because of a broke society. What then? Help us to understand God. This life's temporary. You could come any moment. Father, we don't need to be found without. 
We need to be found within. God, if there's anybody struggling today, let them bring their cares to the altar. God, to seek you and seek your face. God, if there's one not sure about whether they die and go to heaven to, to, today, if they fell dead in their floor, God, I pray they'd come today. God, if they, they, they've been held down by things of this world, whatever, God, they come and give it all to you. You said that you would take that load off of them and you would put it in the sea of forgetfulness. Have your will and way, Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand. Hope you have a great day. Hope you rest up. Eat some of them fresh. If you ain't, if you ain't got nothing fresh, uh, uh, go see Brother Mike. His wife's put up a lot of good fresh stuff in there over there. Uh, anyway, uh, some dill pickles that's out of this world, so I've been told. Uh, but anyway, uh, sweet pickles are on the way, so y'all got a sweet tooth. Hang on, it's coming. But God's good, ain't he? All the time, and God is good all the time. He is. Um, don't forget there's a little meeting right after there. If you're involved with that, head that way. Uh, come back to be with us. Uh, good to have Brother C.W. with us. And I'm going to ask him if he feels like it, though. Close us out in prayer. Brother C. Will you close us out? Heavenly Father, thank you for that.